Hello, here I am again, Ash from London, with another album ranking. Right, um, who did I do last? The Fall I did last, didn't I? I hope who, whoever saw that enjoyed it, and uh, started listening to Fall immediately. Um, I was looking back at the few videos I've done so far, and realised I've not featured any female artists yet, so I thought I'd better get on to that. There's um, quite a few in the pipeline. Uh, the other day I did um, a... Uh, Top 10 albums of my favourite male solo artist, that's David Bowie. And um, today I'm doing my favourite female solo artist, that's PJ Harvey. Polly Jean Harvey, to her mum. Um, yeah, I mean, PJ's been around for quite a while now, almost 30 years on the scene. And uh, <clears throat> she has a, a run of uh, nine studio albums, which might not seem that many, but uh, I say quality over quantity with PJ. Uh, started out um, the first two albums. Uh, PJ Harvey was also the name of the band, the PJ Harvey Trio, along with um, Steve Vaughan on bass and uh, Rob Ellis on drums. And then by the third album, she kind of like and just become more of a, just a solo artist, and um, there's been the same ever since. Lots of collaborators. Uh, Rob Ellis actually has uh, played with her uh, quite a few times since, uh, mainly in, in the studio. Um, mm. She was originally. Oh, is that PJ calling in? Yeah. Just making sure I'm carrying on with it. Uh, she was originally in a band with them um, called I gotta get pronounce this properly. Automatic Delamini, Delamini, uh, with a guy called John Parrish, who um, has, has um, collaborated with her on and off pretty much ever since. She's actually, she's actually done two albums with him that I've not included in this rundown. Um, but yeah, John Parrish, he was actually with her on the last tour. I saw I saw him on her most recent tour. He was playing um, guitar with her there. Um, so, yeah, what can I say? I'll just, I'll just carry on. She's been around for a while, like I said, um, very successful. She's been a bit under the radar for most of her career. She's not kind of like, I mean, she's one of the most creative singer-songwriters of, of, of the last couple of decades, I think. And um, a lot of people, have, she's not really um, top of mind with a lot of people. You know, she's not like Adele or Amy Winehouse. She's, um, but yeah, she's just trundled along and do some really good. She's a great musician, plays guitar, saxophone, keyboards, whatever. And uh, yeah, well, what can I say? I'll, I'll just carry on my little rundown. There's nine studio albums here. Uh, let's make a start. Right, the first one, number nine, coming in. This is her most recent album from uh, 2016. They, the Hope Six Demolition Project. Uh, which is really, like I say, all these albums are really good, but um, this is a good album, but it's just coming in at number nine. Um, I, like I say, I saw them on this on this tour, which was a, a tour was really great. It was, um, I can't remember how many band members there were, there seemed to be quite a lot of people on stage when I saw them. Lots of instruments. I think there was about four saxophones played at once, at one point, and lots of uh, percussion and all kinds of stuff around. But yes, it's a really, really, really good album. This was her, her first UK number one. Got to number one in the UK charts, this. And, um, yeah, so it was uh, inspired by the Hope Six uh, project in um, the US, which I'm not quite sure when that started. I think it's like an ongoing project to, uh, um, to get get rid of the slum housing in the States and uh, re you know, rehouse people. It's, a, it's kind of thing that's happening all around the world, really. Um it comes under a lot of criticism, um uh, where people, where areas get gentrified, as they call it, you know, where they, they move all the um, the low income people out, and all the slums get rebuilt into sort of like middle income um, residents. Uh, happened in Notting Hill in London um, a few years back, and uh, it was quite controversial. So I was looking at this sleeve; it's a very bizarre sleeve. I don't know who, it's that two headed creature there and a strange goat. So it looks very almost very um, I don't know, like witchcraft or something. But yes, it's a great, great album. Um, Community of Hope opens up the album, their Ministry of Defence. It's kind of very socially aware, political, kind of a more political album. Chain of Keys, fourth track in, is a good track. I think she opened the tour with that. I think she opened, she definitely opened the Glastonbury appearance with that. I think she played Glastonbury in this one. There's a Near the Memorials to Vietnam and Lincoln, Orange Monkey Medicinals. Yeah, some really, really cool, cool stuff on this. Because there's a nice little sleeve. All my PJ stuff is on CD at the moment. But, uh, she has re-released a lot of stuff on vinyl recently, so um, I'll be looking into uh, upgrading myself with some of that. Um, uh, there's a nice shot in the middle there. Um, I'm trying to remember who who um, photographed that. 
uh, Seamus Murphy, I think it was. Seamus Murphy had uh, worked with her on a previous album, which was um, the Mercury Prize winning Let England Shake. He'd um, produced some videos to go with that album, so he did the shot in there. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I don't want to waffle on too much. That's uh, my number nine in this rundown. The Hope Six Demolition Project from 2016. Coming in at number eight, we go back to 2007. And White Chalk, which is a um, very different style to the rest of her stuff. Uh, PJ is very guitar based, so she was up until this point, and a bit more since with the addition of sax and things. But th this was um, came out. It was more kind of gothic uh, style, with a bit of uh, more piano based. Uh, a lot of the songs. Um, I mean, piano wasn't uh, one of her main instruments. Apparently, she had to kind of like learn it um, pretty much, and she thought that's a great way to get into it. Just um, plonk away there and it's um I think it really worked really well. Um actually the gothic thing, I mean, even the look of her on the front there, she's got a kind of Victorian dress on. And uh she wore that during, I saw her on this tour as well. She wore that during the tour. And very different from the um the uh, Hope Six Demolition tour where this was just basically a one woman show. She was on stage with an array of instruments and she just moved around the stage from piano to guitar to percussion to auto harp. And uh, Mick Harvey um, from the Bad Seeds, um, he joined her for, for a few songs. He supported her on the tour. And um, he uh, joined her on stage for a few songs. But uh, yeah, it was pretty much just her, and it was really, really good. Uh, it was a really, really good show. But yeah, some really good tracks on here. It starts off with uh, The Devil, which is um, quite a good track. Dear Darkness, um, kind of like a slower number. There's um, Grow, Grow, Grow. When Under Ether, that's kind of creepy. Some of this is quite, quite creepy, quite. Um, Almost like ghost like, I think that's the way to the, the kind of a, uh, the gothic, almost like there's a ghost in an old Victorian school hall or something singing these songs. The piano sounds like that kind of um, slightly out of tune um, pub piano you used to get, the old um, ragtime kind of sound. Um, white chart title tracks, um, a good track, but you have some really nice stuff on here. Uh, she was singing in a different register than usual, like a higher register. Um, I think it was like a pitch outside our usual range, which was, was, range was quite in, interesting. Um, but yeah, it was just a, like if you if you if you listen to this alongside one of her earlier albums, it's like like a different person altogether. But uh, it just shows um, her talent, the way she moves. I mean, like with David Bowie, the way he sounded different and changed his um, changed his uh, his look and his sound, a very similar kind of thing. But anyway, there. Yeah, that's his um, number eight, my little rundown. From 2007, White Chalk. Okay, keeping in the noughties, 2004 for the next one, number seven. Uh her her, uh her her, I think I pronounced that right. Uh her her. It's looking a bit frowny on the front there, isn't she? Now, this was again uh, another different kind of um, sound for her. Um, she'd had the previous album, had, um, well, I mean, the previous album had kind of like been her. Um, Big breakthrough. Um, I mean, she'd had an earlier breakthrough in the nineties, but um, I think the previous album uh, the, the won her a first Mercury Prize, and uh, she was top on, on you know like top of mind for everyone really. And uh, this was a slight change of uh, tack again. Really, it's recorded over a couple of years, so um, you know like she's only recorded nine albums over twenty eight years, so <laughs> she doesn't doesn't rush into things. And um, she basically paid all the, uh, all the instruments herself on this as well, which was uh, was, was commendable. And it's a, it's a really um, real change of tack. It was recorded at, at home on four four track eight track recorders, and uh, I think it's just the drums she didn't play. I think old um, Rob Ellis came back and did did the drum tracks on this, and she's just gone back to a more basic kind of personal kind of raw sound. It was um, like the previous album was a bit more overproduced and. Um, well, overproduced in a good way, but you know, just a different sound altogether, really. And this had sort of like gone more back to basics. Um, but so uh, yeah, some uh, good tracks on here, and there's some really cool guitar that starts it off. Um, you've got things like the letter, the slow drug, some uh, good tracks. It's all very actually it reminds me of the back of it, it reminds me of the fall and their singles, all sort of handwritten and patched up <laughs> kind of stuff, but a very sort of collagey. Um, but yeah, really, really good album. Well worth listening to. Very, very moody, sort of slower album though. In, in the main, um, kind of thing you put on in an evening. You know, lights down and open a, have a glass of wine, put on a bit of PJ. 
a bit very sort of thoughtful album. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's uh, my number seven in this little rundown. Uh huh huh. Uh huh huh. I think that's how you, that's how you say it. <laughs> okay, number six. I'm uh, right back to the start from 1992. Dry. This is the first album from the PJ Harvey Trio when they were uh, an indie punk band or whatever you want to call them. They're actually quite grungy at this point. Um, I think um, this was done on a this was released on the Two Pure label. There's a PJ on the back. Even though it's a band, there's still only only her face on the on the case there. I don't think I don't think the rest of the band are actually featured in here at all. No, there's no, no pictures of the other two guys. But um yeah this was uh, I think uh, in an interview she was saying she wasn't quite sure whether this is the only thing she's ever going to record so she put everything into it and um, some really really cool tracks on it. Oh my lover. Sheila Nagig um which is a six track in that was um, I think that was released a single that's one of the first things I remember hearing about here. I've got a feeling it was on some kind of sampler from one of these free CDs you see on, on music mags. But yeah, this is really kind of like, um, good kind of like post-punk kind of um, grungy kind of, uh, or post-grungy, <laughs> post-grunge, because this was slightly after, or at the height of grunge really, 92, I suppose. But um, yeah, and uh, the sound was coming from uh, Dorset or around that area, it was a bit, a bit different. But it got sparked a lot of interest, and uh, after this, the um, the bigger record companies were uh, wanted to sign her, and she was a little bit reluctant because um, she was a bit worried about losing creative control, I think. And signing with a big label, you tend to lose that a little bit. But uh, she signed with Island um, after this, so um, that was I thought that was a good choice because Island are uh, renowned for giving the, the the artist a lot of freedom. So um, that that's where she ended up. So um, she did another album as the the band, and then the rest of it was on the career. I think I think she's still with Island today, really. Then I'll have a quick look at the back of this. Yep, still on Island. So been with them for quite a while now. So anyway, yeah, that's um, dry. Bit of a disturbing sleeve there, but um, it looks like a very sort of sore mouth. But I think it's just it might be just a lipstick mal malfunction <laughs> or something. But uh, yeah, that's uh, from nineteen ninety two. It's my uh, number six. <clears throat> right, so quick drink. Right, moving on to top five. Back to the 90s, 1998. Is this Desire? Another kind of um, change of tack from the previous album. Um, the one before this, where are we now? 1990. Got to get my, um, got to get my dates right. Three years before this, she had she released To Ring Me My Love, which was um, a, a real big breakthrough as a solo artist. This came out, and then again, it was another one that was recorded over a longer period. It was recorded, I think, 12 months recording. And um, she went to for a more quieter, atmospheric sound, um, moving away from the guitar, which uh, was on the previous stuff, from that grungy kind of guitar, the, the fuzzy guitar. Um, she uh, moved more to sort of keyboards, bass, and ele electronics, really, but a bit subtler and darker. I mean, there's some some great tracks on here. There's um, Angeline, which opens up the album, which um, I've I've seen a play a few times since this. So it's one of those that stayed in the uh, the set list. The sky lit up, the wind. Um, My beautiful Lee, uh, Catherine, another another great track. The garden. That's another one. I think she played that on the uh, White Chalk tour. But uh, and then is it is it is our title track? But yeah, yes, an, another great album. Um, and she's always got this um, interesting image that she portrays on the front there. She's got some rather bizarre high fringe on that. So, and she looks different every time. She's great. It's good to uh, keep keep that keep everyone guessing. And uh, in, you know, there are interesting sleeves. A nice shot to uh, uh, Dorset Lighthouse, I think, on the back there. Of a postcard shot, a bit blurry, but uh, yeah. So yeah, anyway, that's another good album. Is this Desire from nineteen ninety eight? More, more drinky poos. Okay, moving on. Number four. This was the uh, the one that won her her second Mercury Prize. Let England Shake from uh, two thousand eleven. Um, I really when this song came out, I really really loved it. It was um, my album of the year for two thousand eleven. Uh, it was recorded in a church in Dorset. Um, the usual usual suspects were involved. People like John Parrish and uh, Mick Harvey, all involved. I think is it 
Is the church featured here? I can't remember. There's a building there inside. Look with that. That's what I'm sure that's a church or not. Let's investigate, shall we? If we can get this out. Oh yeah, there we go. It was recorded in the in the church there. See that the band there. So, which gave it a really nice um nice atmospheric kind of sound uh, in, inside. So um, I can imagine that that you know that that would have really given some really cool acoustics. But yeah, like I say, it won the Mercury Prize, and uh, it was basically the basic theme of this was a uh, war, really. Um, from um, she was inspired by uh, Harold Pinter and T. S. Eliot poems initially, and lots of other things. And it's um, it was uh, the theme of war from right from World War One uh, through to the um, the war in Afghanistan, and the Middle East, and uh, called the ongoing conflicts. And it was just the just the. Uh, I don't know, it's the, um, the sadness and stupidity of war in general, really, but it was a, a very, very atmospheric album, got some superb tracks on it, very heartfelt. PJ um, did the illustration on the front herself there, and there she is on the back, looking a bit windswept. But yeah, I just, I just love this album, the, the title track, Let England Shake, which uh, borrows from uh, that tune, Istanbul, not Constantinople, the very beginning, that, that gets a credit, which is good. Uh, Laugh, Living Rose, Glorious Land. The words that make us murder, just kind of a haunting little tune. Um, Battleship Hill, all and every one, in dark places. It's really, 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 really um, moving stuff. Um, and I thought the title was quite. I guess the title, "Let England Shake," it's kind of, kind of an intriguing kind of title, really. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, just loved it. She actually got more into the auto harp on this as well. I remember reading an interview with her saying she's something about the auto harp. I imagine sounding inside that church must have sounded amazing because uh, I saw she was playing that quite a bit on um, the uh, White Chalk tour as well. But uh, yeah, it's a great album, great album indeed, and uh, well deserved of the Mercury Prize. And is it is my number four in this little rundown. Let England Shake from 2011. Okay, top three now. <clears throat> now this this next one is the one that I really got me into PJ at the time when she, when she was still PJ Harvey the band. 1993's Rid of Me. Uh, interesting shot of her there on the front. Uh, apparently that was taken with um, like a strobe flash. I think uh, it was the room was it was in, a, in someone's bathroom. I can't remember the name of the person that did the photo oh what's she called um maria something maria mock mock nuts or something maria mock anyway so much she knew it was in, in in this bathroom and she was um had this camera going the, the bathroom the room was so small they had to have the camera wrap against the wall so she wasn't even looking down the lens and just took all these shots while uh, pj shook her head around and that was the the one they chose for the um the final the final cover but yeah, th this was a great album. Really. This this really was. Oh, there the other the band the other band members are featured this time. Well, that's good. Um, but yeah, this was this was a superb. Um, just got some great. Uh, this is this was very grungy. Uh, Rid of me, Mist, legs, rub till it bleeds. Some great great tracks. Uh, Man sizes on here as well, which was um, one of the early songs I heard. I heard dry. Um, 50 Foot Queenie, which was a class, that's sort of a live favourite at the time, just really, really good, good stuff. Now it was produced by uh, Mr. Steve Albini, uh, so uh, they were in good hands with him. He'd um, previously done the Pixies, Breeders, uh, of course he was a member of Big Black, um, Shellac, and then uh, later, uh, this, um, later this this year, he um, produced the final Nirvana album, so um, he was a... Quite busy around that time. I'm not quite sure what he's doing these days, but um, yeah, it was with um, Mr. Albini in charge. So um, yeah, so I, I, to be honest, I don't know why this is. It's probably because it's a, it's a British artist. This is never featured in any of those uh, top ten grunge albums. Maybe I'll have to do a grunge album listing. And include this because it's definitely worthwhile putting in there. It's got a lot of angst in it, a lot of anger, a lot of um, a lot of melody, a lot of great guitar work. I mean, the one thing PJ is. Uh, apart from being a great songwriter, she's a really, really good guitarist as well. So um, that's it. Yeah, number three, "Rid of Me," nineteen ninety-three, in Band of the Rundown. <coughs> number two, this is the one that made her uh, big name. Uh, her first official solo album, her third release, 
1995 to bring you my love and uh, as you can see it was awarded for uh, the Brit Award as, as the sticker says on the front there Tiny tried to take off but was stuck on too hard but oh, I'll leave it there it's a bit of bit of history and uh, yeah this was this was just brilliant this is where the guitar her guitar work really came to the fore and, uh, and again a different different look which is um, pretty incredible actually doesn't look that very much like her at all there so but she's going for that over the top makeup period at the time <clears throat> and um just a great 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 album with some great tracks on here uh, to bring you my love Meet the Monster, Working for the Man, Come On Billy, which I think was a single. But, uh, I remember Come On Billy was played quite a lot at um, what the, one of the festivals I went to that year, in between bands where DJs would play a few bits of music and Come On Billy was featured quite a lot. And then Down By The Water, some of this is quite disturbing um, in, in a way, they have that kind of that morbid kind of sound to them, but just really good. This album's a real good, again, another different sounding album they're all great but they all have a different vibe about them and th this one is kind of like I don't know, a bit, something quite on the undercurrent of uh, of sadness of uh, i don't know morbidity about it uh to send his to send um his love to me sorry not to send just send his love to me just uh, really good and the, the dancer finishes it and just sails off into a distance he walk crack it oh crack it we think <laughs> what a great album but um yeah I really, this, this is when i realized this was the, the second album I bought by her, and uh, this one I really love. PJ, she's going to be around for a while. Just can't wait to hear some more stuff. Right? So, um, yeah, great, great album. So um, that is my. I'm not quite sure if it won the the Brit Award. I'll have, to, I'll have to check that out. But it was definitely a nominee. The sticker says so. So that's my number two PJ album. To bring you my love. What I might have to do is buy all these on on vinyl, and then do another rundown. So. Not as shiny on screen. There might be a slightly different order. I mean, my top two have changed a couple of times during this, and uh, to bring to bring in my love was was number one for a short time, but it got hopscotched because I gave this one another listen today, in fact, and it uh, hopped up to number one. This is my number one favorite PJ Harvey album from the year two thousand. It's her first uh, Mercury winning album, and it's. Stories from the city, stories from the sea, and um, yeah, it's an absolute superb album. Um, I was I was thinking about guitar albums the other day, about just in general, and uh, this is up there. This is one of the, it's a really great guitar album. I mean, um, her guitar of choice uh, is uh, Gibson Firebird, I think, and that's one you see her play mostly. Uh, but she also plays Eastwood guitars as well. It's like an Eastwood um, airline, I think it's called. Um, is it the Eastwood Airline? It's got lots of loads of buttons and knobs on it all the time, and it has that kind of like real sort of like almost like a Rickenbacker kind of sound. But um, yes, yeah, just just some great great guitar work on here. Great power chords, just great great, no, just really really cool stuff. I mean, it starts off brilliantly with big exit. I see the one two. It's the all one two thing. You know, one two, big exit and good good fortune, which I think was a single. Well, they might multiple single. I'm not quite sure, but they. Feature quite often in um, in um, live shows. Place called home, one line, beautiful feeling. Uh, just just really really good good stuff. Um, there's a track here called uh, the mess we're in, where she uh, duets with Tom York from Radiohead. Who well, I think I think Tom actually plays on some other tracks as well. But um, Rob Ellis is on this on drums again from the original trio Mick Harvey. I'm I'm not quite sure if um, John Parrish is on this or not. So he, might be somewhere, but uh, just really, 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 really good track. This, this is love. That's a great track. That's one of my favourites. That's just really good. That's a really good. Still, still a bit grungy, you know, but um, still out there. It's just real nice stuff. And this is probably uh, probably our most. Um, I wouldn't say conventional. This is just a really good rock album to get into. Um, it's um, not very, not as experimental as some of their other things. Not as, not as moody. It's just a just a good a good guitar guitar album. Um, the the mellower song uh, on this um, is uh, track twelve, We Float, which um, finishes the album, which is more piano based actually, isn't it? It's not as strong on the guitars are, but that's kind of like does what it says. It floats off and then closes the album. But yeah, that's, um, it was also apparently she'd stayed in New York for a while, so a lot of this was influenced by being in New York. Although she doesn't like calling it her New York album because it wasn't recorded there to start with, 
but apparently she was influenced and made a point to stay in there for about nine months, I think it was. So um, that kind of like gave it a bit of, um, yeah, a bit of a, a bit of influence for her. So um, anyway, so that that's my number one PJ Harvey album, Stories from the City, Stories from the Sea. So, um, sorry about the glare and all these today. I'll just start. I'll do something about that, but what can you do, eh? Jewel cases are a bit shiny. Anyway, there you go. So, I hope you all enjoyed that. That's, uh, let's say, my first first female artist in my uh, video channel to be uh, ranked. So, more to come, obviously. But, um, yeah, that's uh, <coughs> that's PJ Ashley Stones. Um, I'm looking forward to her next release. I mean, it's uh, how many years now? It's been four years since the last album. So, but as you can tell, she doesn't doesn't rush herself to do any more albums. So. I'm sure I can. I can wait as long as I. I know it's going to be good. That's what I can be sure of. But like I said, any of those albums are worth investigating if you're not familiar with PJ. And yeah, that's that. So thank you for being there. Hope you enjoyed that. More to come. And um, I'll just say bye for now. Bye for now. <laughs>